Hello, Don Canet here in southern Portugal at the Portimao Race Circuit, where I'm riding the KTM 1290 Super Duke R. It's had a generational update for 2020. They're actually calling this the Beast 3.0. So it's the, basically the third iteration of the 1290 Super Duke. It's a model that's been around for quite a bit longer. And uh, this is the cat's meow right here. They've uh, done some engine updates uh, along the lines of bringing it to Euro 4 and Euro 5 uh, emissions compliance and they haven't lost any power. They actually gained a couple of horsepower on top and they maintained a you know, mountain of torque throughout the rev range. And so that's quite an achievement when uh, you're tightening emissions and you're still trying to make a performance engine that's, that's not gonna disappoint. They achieved that by larger airbox, about 25% larger airbox. They've added shower head injectors on top of the two velocity stacks. Now you have primary injectors plus secondary shower head injectors, which basically help it with that high RPM power output. Uh, they revised the ram air intake. Now it's centrally located between the headlights and it's more efficient. Also, the exhaust has been revised two catalyzers now that's part of the you know getting it uh, within the emission standards but keeping the flow they've increased the diameter of the uh, the head pipes and they actually have staggered diameter so the like the front head pipe is a little bit smaller than the rear because the rear uh, has to travel more distance to join where it goes into the collector they've also shaved some weight off that exhaust system overall the bike comes in about 13 pounds lighter than its predecessor we can credit the engine cases for part of that. They've you know, just taken material away wherever they could. The new frame is lighter, yet about 15% stiffer, and it uses the engine as a stress member. New wheels, lighter, stronger than before. A really nice design. It has a new swing arm, the cast uh, single-sided swing arm and it is also torsionally stiffer, and they've uh, spent some time relocating the pivot point mount. So basically they've, they've raised the engine up in the frame a little bit from its predecessor. They got the swing arm pivot a little bit higher. They've reduced some of the squat tendency to improve traction under power exiting corners. A revision of the, the front fork, and also uh, the, the rear shock now uses more travel. They changed the linkage for the rear suspension. So it's substantially more travel in the shock itself, which uh, helps control because you're moving more oil and it just gives you, you better control, particularly in the initial part of the stroke. So my experience today uh, out riding on the road and the track on this bike, it's a bike that's got improved performance and handling on the track, but it hasn't suffered anything on the street. It was impressively compliant on this street ride. We hit a few pretty good bumps and dips, a few sharp ones, but overall, the, uh, the comfort on the street was improved from where it was with a, a even bigger improvement on the track. So that's quite an achievement in itself. The electronics have been revised, improved. Um, the, the settings are calibrated more for the new uh, chassis package, let's say. It's got a new switch gear that works really well, integrated well with all the options in the dash. Um, it's got co connectivity that we're seeing on a lot of bikes now with the smartphones and navigation and that type of thing. Okay, so the ergonomics, basically the bars in the past were adjustable, you know, and they have four positions of adjustment. Now they're a little bit further forward and a little bit lower as the standard placement, helping you keep more weight over the front, which really helps on a bike like this. Foot rests are also now adjustable. The standard position puts them a little bit lower, a little bit further forward, and from there you can make them a bit sportier, moving them back. The saddle is a little more comfortable than before. The you know better foam on it, I'd say. They've shortened the distance, the depth of the saddle, so now the, the rear bump stop, if you have the solo seat like on the track, you know, there's a bump stop if you're riding it with the passenger pad. It's a, a step saddle, so it it's holds you in position better than its predecessor. It just keeps your, your body forward, which uh, when you're on the gas on a torquey monster like this, being able to, to keep a more relaxed grip on the bars and not feeling like you're always sliding back, exiting corners, 
uh, really pays off, uh, less fatiguing, and also just helps the stability of the bike if you're not clinging on to the bars. Overall, it's quite the beast. Beast 3.0 didn't disappoint on the track or the street. It's a bike that really just has a ton of torque in the mid-range. There's no need to rev it to its 10,500 RPM redline. I found the, the peak torque is at eight grand, so shifting about 9,500 would bring it right back into the peak of the torque and it'd pull off these corners. This track has some tight uh, corners typically taken in second on this bike. Taking them in third was just incredibly fun. You had more time to just stretch that gear off the corner. It didn't really lack anything. Letting the revs drop down there about six grand. You can just pull it. And there's places here where you can just feel a drift and maintain that drift with the electronics, watching your backside, having plenty of gear to just drive it off the corner, and then grab an upshift with the quick shift. It's got the up and down shift action like a lot of bikes now. All functions real well, makes it uh, that much easier for us common guys to ride on a track or on our favorite back roads.